Hi everybody and welcome back to another Doug's Lab video. Uh, I haven't made a video in a long time because I've just moved in for my third year here at school so uh, I, am, I am in my dorm room and I don't have my lab with me so this is kind of thrown together but I decided to make a video because I recently found three of these big uh, fluorescent light fixtures in the trash and of course they all had working ballasts in them so that was kind of nice. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate the properties of one of these ballasts. Basically what a ballast does is it limits the current that flows through the one or through these fluorescent tubes up here. And the reason you need to do that is because when the tube when the gas is ionized inside the tube, um, it's basically a short circuit. Now this is a very fancy electronic ballast. You could simply use a resistive ballast, although it would uh, bleed off a lot of power. But what this basically does is um, there's, there's a bunch of circuitry in here that limits the current, and there's also um, several components which allow they produce high voltage spikes on these uh, on three these three wires to start the lamps initially, and then once they get established, they provide a continuous current to flow through them. Um, yeah, so basically I've hooked this, uh, I've hooked all three of these together in parallel so I can get triple the current as opposed to just using one lead. Um, this is my ground wire and I have clipped in here a pair of 0.7 millimeter uh, mechanical pencil graphites. And what I'm basically going to do is strike an arc between there and uh, show you how bright that this arc light can possibly be, <laughs> which is pretty bright. Now, like I said, I'm not in my lab, so I don't have any spare power cords or anything, so I'm about to do something extremely dangerous. Please don't try this at home. Um, I'm basically, the good thing these were solid conductors because they fit in the wall socket rather nicely. Oops. Not that nicely, but no, now i got to watch because that's already hot. It's on, the other, it's on the output of the input transformer. Okay, cool. So now I've wired this single lamp up so I know when this, so when this ballast is on, but there's a separate ballast in that light that's providing that power. Uh, anyway... Here's this little setup, and I'll just uh, grab the grounded side and uh, strike the arc while trying not to touch anything else with it. Oh yeah, very bright. Completely overrides anything that that lamp is producing that's in front of me here. Now, something interesting I have noticed is that um, the CCD of my camera is completely overdriven by the arc light. And if you'll notice the spacing between those two lines of interference that are being produced, um, they change. And basically what that is, is because uh, the way this arc is forming, the hottest part, the thing that's actually giving off the light are the graphite sticks because they're getting so hot, not really the arc. So um, you can tell that there are two separate graphite sticks that are really, really hot at their ends and you, the lines, uh, or the interference lines of my camera separate as I pull the graphites apart. So I'll show that again. See? I can pull them apart and push them together. That sort of thing. So, kind of neat. I don't know. Anyway, let's get this unplugged because it's not very safe. Yeah, yeah. so that's been uh, a ballast demonstration, I suppose. Um, like I said, I have two more of these, so I'll see if I can make anything interesting with them once I get them back to my lab. But until then, it's nothing but studying and maybe some of this. So, subscribe, rate, and comment, and thanks for watching.